I'm Reese Stein at your leisure cruising down the river and not just any river this is the San Juan in southeastern Utah a great playground today but a place people have been enjoying for thousands of years while not as well known or as wild as the Green and Colorado rivers, the San Juan along the Utah-Arizona border is a popular float through spectacular desert canyons. Utah State Park's river ranger Brody Young and archaeologist Don Montoya are taking Marianne and me down the 27-mile stretch from the sand island put in a bluff to Mexican Hat. Advanced reservations from the BLM are required and can be hard to come by during the popular spring runoff. Below Sand Island, the San Juan meanders through open country where thousands of years ago, ancestral Pueblo cultures established solid communities. I get chills. <laughs> yeah. The stunning rock art on the Butler wash panel at milepost four affects Don Montoya both professionally as a scientist and personally. Having native ancestry, I feel a stewardship to my people presently and anciently is that part of my responsibility also is to preserve this on their behalf as well. Pottery shards, grinding tools called monos and matates litter the beach near the rock art, and moky steps carved into the sandstone leading to a natural passage through the cliffs tell Montoya that we are just among the most recent peoples to have visited this place over thousands of years. The Moki steps are there because this has been used extensively over a long period of time. And when we see the gap in the rock right here, we know that this was probably a major crossing. Less than two miles downstream, but not obvious from the river, is one of the largest Mesa Verde style cliff dwellings in Utah. Ancients lived in River House from 700 to 1300 AD, successfully farming the San Juan Valley until they mysteriously moved out in the 14th century. With motors, this stretch is runnable in a day, but most camp overnight, some spending three or four days. We chose one of the many ideal sandy beaches on the north side of the river. The south side is Navajo land and requires special permission to camp or even hike. Brody builds our cooking fire in a metal pan to protect the beach. The Groover, what river runners dub the portable toilet, is located a ways downstream. Both Groover and fire pan are required. Pack it in, pack it out. On this warm night with no rain nor mosquitoes in sight, only Don pitches his tent, we enjoy an incredible night under a billion stars and awaken to Brody cooking breakfast, while families of Canada geese glide by enjoying their own morning meal. From here, the San Juan cuts through Comb Ridge, an upwarp in the Colorado Plateau, exposing some 115 million years of geology in four river miles. Canyon walls quickly tower 800 feet overhead. Great blue herons gracefully lead the way. I thought I, I, I would be most impressed with the rock panels and the cliff house, and, and I was really impressed with those, but the scenery here is what surprised me most. There's beautiful scenery on this river. The cliffs and the different formations and how it hits the water, and, and every time you turn a corner, it's different. So it's, it's gorgeous. It's one of the prettiest canyons I've ever been in. Life jackets are required at all times, but the river is gentle with few actual rapids. Smaller boats, including kayaks, make the riffles even more exciting. It's a great river run, safe for families, including all generations, old or young. It's got its own beauty, and it's a little more tame and more family-oriented. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. How are you guys doing? We're good. How are you? Great, great. Towering Mexican hat rock signals the beginning of the end to this unique southeastern Utah adventure. I'm Reese Stein at your leisure on the San Juan River.